Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of With Finished Wednesday, and we are going to jump right into the tying, do this a little bit different than we have in the past, and I hope everyone is hopping on and saying hello as we speak, and we are looking forward to hanging out with y'all, and Katie's going to do a quick drawing here in just a few minutes. We'll do that at the quarter mark, and um, and also she's going to show some of the uh, the flies that were submitted to us from last week. Hello, Mr. Bashirs. It is good to see you, and I hate that we're going to miss you out west because you'll be there at the beginning of September. Hey, Ed. Um, so, Katie, let's uh, switch over to the vice here, and we'll show what we're going to tie. Um, tonight we're going to be tying this, um, the Gasolina Pertagon. Hey, Mike. Good day, Ken. Ken, you let us know before you have to leave. Give us about a five-minute warning. And when you say, I got to leave, I got to go to work, Katie will switch over and start showing pictures. And uh, Mike, Mark with Chasing Feathers. And hey, Jimmy and Mr. Yates. Hey, Glenn. Um, so this is the, um, the Gasolina Pertagon. And here, this is a size 14. I meant to have this arranged a little bit better. So I'll pull this out. You'll be able to see it a little bit better. We The size 16s are what I posted earlier today. So this is the 14 that I just had in the vise. Here's a few size 16s and a size 18. And uh, hey, Todd <clears throat> and Glenn, everything is going well. Um, so the key thing with the gasolina, there's a lot of different variations as far as thread color and the tinsel that you use. Um, and, and notice I'll, the tinsel because the tinsel gives it its name. Yes. And as Katie was saying, the tinsel, the color of it should look like the sheen of gasoline on top of water. Um, Mike, yes, absolutely. And this is so close to a lot of other patterns. But one reason I really like this is because it teaches you a lot of good tying habits. It's a very, it's a really simple, simple fly. You can tie it. Um, I'd say you know, I'd like to have some 20s, but um, 16 and 18 would probably be my go-to patterns, but I'd probably have a handful of 14s and a handful of 20s. Um, you're a poet and don't work. That's right, Glenn, I try. Um, so um, I'm going to whip one out real quick, and we're going to use the, uh, the size 16 uh, Umqua XC400BL. Now, if I go to a 20, I'll use this, um, the Perta jig. I've got one already loaded up right here on my little lid, lid rig magnet. As you can see, that works well to, um, if you're stage tying or do, if you, you know, want to put a bunch of beads on hooks or just have your hooks laid out, a little magnetized pad is nice, but I figured y'all didn't want to sit and watch me for five minutes, stick a bead on the, on the hook. Um, so as I said, I'm using the, the XC 400 BL. So we're going to load up the 16 in the vise. Now I'm going to use copper beads. Um, and uh, for and I don't do this 100% all the time. But as a general rule, um, 3.5 for 14s. Come on, my glass is on. I won't be able to see a thing. 3.5 millimeter beads for 14s, 3 millimeter beads for 16s, and 2.5 for 18s. Now you can use 2.3s, you can use 2.8s, you can, you know, really complicate it. And, um, and you really should have other size um, and weights in your, in your box. So you can uh, adjust the sync rate. But for the most part, um, you know, if you're just going to have one, that's, that's usually good for me anyway. That's, that's been a good um, kind of go-to. Good, Katie, you're getting some, uh, some compliments it's so already. Gimmicky. It's so gimmicky. It's so gimmicky. It's really not a good deal. <laughs> Um, so let's get this one in here. So it looks straight for you guys anyway. Um, so the thread I'm going to be using on the bodies is going to be the 12 watt Semperfly classic wax thread and medium olive. Now I've seen people to use tan. I've seen people use a lot of different colors for the underbody, but the underbody is important because, um, the color shines through your, uh, your tinsel and the tinsel I'm, I'm going to be using is the Pertagon body iridescent copper. Now, you can totally change it and do iridescent purple and use purple thread or use a black thread or something. But then you start like you're not really in the gasolina anymore. Um, and you know when the fish are fish are just going to eat the gasolina, so don't eat the other colors. Hardy har. Hey Jeff. Um, so 
for my hot spots. And this is probably the, the big material that I'd like to, to kind of highlight on this, on this fly is the 18 knot class of wax thread. And we'll show you why in just a little bit. So I'm going to start the thread right behind the hook, right behind the hook, right behind the hook, right behind the bead and work my way back. And I'll pop it off and I'm going to bring it back to right about here. Now I want to make sure that when, um, when I've tied my tail in, um, I've got just a little bit right here that'll be, that'll make the tail go straight. If I put another wrap or two on this, when I tie my tail in, it's going to be going down. So you don't have to, and, and really I could tie the tail in right there and be just fine. Um, but if you notice right now, I've got the uh, bear shank all the way back. Hey, John, nice to see you hopping on. So the tail is going to be some uh, Whitey Farms Coque de Leon uh, in, I think this is medium pardo, medium or dark pardo. It might be light part of it. And I'm going to use on a 16, I'm going to use four to five fibers. So let's see how many this is. You guys count one, two, is that five or is that six? Two, three, four, that's six. Oh my gosh. We'll call it good. Um, so six would be about as much I want to use on these. So I pull off, got the butts. And right now my tails are going the correct direction. So I don't have to switch them. So that's, that's why I pulled them off that way. Steve, I know I said four to five and I'm going to use six, but I would say five plus or minus one on the 16, uh, four plus or minus one on 18. Uh, I probably wouldn't ever put less than three, but, um, you know, really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to avoid um, <clears throat> really loading it down with, with fiber. So uh, if you know, if you notice, I didn't really pay much attention to, um, to the length when I tied it in, I just slapped it on there with a the pinch wrap. So I'm gonna come here and grab the butts, hold my thread up and pull it to length. So you can see my, my tails are even going down just a little bit right now. I'll pull them up and they'll be fine. Um, so I want them to be roughly the shank length. So you see there's my shank, there's my tails. Um, the numbers, you don't, you don't wanna put a lot of tails on there because that's gonna slow your sink rate down. What's up, Southeastern Flyworks over on the Insta Twitter? Come over and say hey to us on Insta, on YouTube. It will be able to see us a little bit better, I believe. And I'll zoom in a little bit over here. Thank you for that. I'll move the camera around. It's nice holding thread and moving cameras. Um, all right, so um, we've got one wrap in here. Our tail's good. Uh, it's the right length. Now I'm going to uh, bring my thread up with touching wraps. So if you look, my <clears throat> fibers, the butt ends are going right in between the slot of that bead right now. Um, and the way I'm going to keep it there is I'm going to put my wrap forward and then kind of pull it to the front forward. I, I do a wrap and then pull that thread forward. And that kind of keeps everything on top. Nice, smooth um, underbody there. Solid gold bead. It's a copper bead, but thank you, Jeff. I guess I didn't say that the color of it. I need to get some more we're, here in a little while. We're going to use the fancy model tan on the 20. Um, so I don't know if that made any sense when Steve said good tip on a thread, but as opposed to just wrapping straight back and forth, um, that'll, that can kind of push your, uh, uh, push your materials around. If you'll make that wrap kind of loose and then pull it towards the eye, pull your thread towards the eye, that'll, kind of, that'll help keep everything on top. So let's build our taper. Um, this being a 16, not this big by any means, but we want to go back to about the two thirds mark. And then this wrap here needs to be kind of an open wrap. This now touching wraps up here. Now we don't want a lot of taper. And if you if you notice your thread starts getting uh, twisted, just untwist it, uncord it. How do we get on the um, you can look NC Fly 5. You can go to our story and uh, click the, there's a Whip Finish Wednesday announcement there. And you'll see, click the link, um, go there, or just go to YouTube and um, Google Demuth Fly. Oh, there you are, James Ross. You found it, NC 5. So, yeah, there you go. Um, all right, so I'm going to go about halfway. 
kind of open wrap and then back up. And that's really all the, see how there's not much taper there? Just a little bit. If you want more taper, that's totally fine. But remember, we're trying to operate, we're trying to tie a very small bug. We're trying to, it could be a caddis, it could be a mayfly. We tie them really small, it could even be a little midge. Um, and see, Gary just now sent me a text. And I figure I'm, I'm going to do that twice just so you all can see it all. Gary sent me a text right before we went online and said uh, he's got something going on, so he's not going to be able to hop on with us tonight. And someone should have filled in and said, dude, you forgot the tinsel. So we'll, start, we'll do that again. Um, 22.3. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're, we're going to tie this this first one just regular without the hot spot, then we'll add it. So another tip. You guys like seeing tips. Here's a question. No, Sorry, Glenn, I didn't see that question until just now. Katie, will you switch over to the side camera? Thank you, ma'am. So another tip is um, you don't want to cut off just enough material for just one fly. Obviously, we cut off enough so we can tie, you know, half a dozen or dozen flies. Not too much that so gets in the way. But this little uh, thin material, I've lost so many of them. And, um, you know, you'll, you'll get done. You maybe I'll have it. You'll throw it in the trash or you'll set it down here and you got your light out trying to find it. So when you're done, cut when you're when you're done wrapping it and you cut it off, grab a pair of hackle pliers and just keep it in your hackle pliers. So now you, you always know where it is. You won't lose it um, and you're good. What's up, Randy? Yeah, it has been a while. Hello from um, uh, Alaska. I believe that's you. So, yes, I did uncord the thread. Um, so we'll switch back over to the uh, to the hook. So <clears throat> a lot of times you'll see people wrap the material right on the top of the hook shank. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it on the side here. So you can see I'll just cast it one wrap. I'm going to hold it down, and my thread is nice and flat. See how flat that is? And this is 12 on classic wax thread. This is not super, super thin stuff, but it's pretty thin. I'm going to go back up, touching wraps. And now we've got our tinsel tied in. Now we're going to do the same thing we did before. Um, <clears throat> we're going to build our, our taper. So bring it down to the, about the two-thirds mark. Or depending on how you're looking at it, maybe the third mark. Um, now we'll do an open wrap, then back up. Now we'll bring it back down. Now you notice I did not build a, um, or tie, I'll open wrap back up. If you'll notice I did not tie a, um, or put a thread dam or anything in to hold the bead. Uh, the bead's gonna get seated. I'm not worried about it. When I told you as we're tying in the tails, you see the butt ends. The butt ends are actually right in the middle of it. Um, so it's kind of keeping it from spinning around. If it does spin around, just make sure you fix it. <clears throat> For whatever it's worth. So you see how the slot is rounded on top? The rounded part is the one you want up top. So, uh, all right. So now we'll wrap the tinsel. So I'm going to grab my tinsel. It's tied in. And we'll bring it up, straight up, and straight down. Now, the reason I did not tie it in on the tinsel on the very top is that first wrap when I go to make it, if it's tied right on top, has a tendency, and, that, and it's it will still work. You can tie it in on top if you really want to. Um, but when you tie it in on top, you've got a tendency to kind of make the, sh the tails a little bit disheveled as you're tying that first wrap. And over there on the side, it makes it just a little bit more, put an extra wrap here, just a little bit more, um, less likely to, um, to mess up your tails. Put three wraps there. And then we'll cut her off. Cool so far. I think I might miss some of the comments. Um, so I'll hold my, put my tinsel back in its little holder. All right. So now we're we're on the home home stretch. You see, there's just a hint of a taper. Um, let's just put a few wraps here to build a little bit of a thorax, a little bit of um. This is where the hot spot would be, but. So where I'm locking everything in. And you see now my bead's not moving. So we're good. Now ready for a whip finish. 
and um, <clears throat> and then we'll be we'll just throw some add some uh, resin on here. And I like just as a matter of habit, so I spin this while holding the whip finish tool and the thread. I like whip finishing right in the slot here. Not so much, it's just out of habit, not so much because the tags don't go in the slot or anything, but if, if this was a, a different type of Pertagon that I had, um, um, that I was going to put a black, a black wing case on, that wing case will, will cover um, my tie-in point here. And James, this is the Semperfly Pertagon tinsel and um, see if it'll cut. Yep. Here we go. In iridescent copper or Pertagon body. So it's 0.4 millimeters, 1 69th of an inch iridescent copper. All right. <clears throat> so, so I'm going to be resining this up, and I'll bet our Australian buddy Ken's probably getting ready to go to work. So, all I'm going to do with this, make sure, let me give one more tip here, and then Katie will do her drawing. And then we'll tie some other little variant. We'll throw a hot spot on one and do some other variations. And you all can ask questions, comments, snide remarks, funny stories, anything for the good of the cause. But the last tip for now is when you're putting the resin on, if you're using resin or whatever, it needs to be really thin, but make sure that the resin doesn't run down uh, into the slot. It's fine to go into the slot, but watch the your eye of the hook because it can fill up the eye of the hook and you don't realize it, and then you've kind of made a mess. <clears throat> but not a big deal. So I'm gonna spin this around. We've got the resin on there, it's looking fine. Now we'll shoot it. And that's done. Do you want to tell um tell them what the winner of the drawing is gonna get this week? Sure. Um it's, it's real quick, Steve, I, I always put too much on it as well. But if you get too much on it, if you're using a bodkin, uh, make sure I've got a like a paper towel here. So I always try to keep my bodkin clean. Um, let's just switch it back over to the device real quick, please. Um, so if you just take your, your um, bodkin where it's dry and just kind of rake it on, that'll pull just by putting the, the dry bucket on there, pulling it this way. This way smooths it around, moves the resin, but by going this way, it, it drags it off. So, you know, drag it off, hit it with the towel, drag it off again. But Mike is absolutely right. I've, I've actually never gotten it down in my bias jaws, but if you put too much on here, not only will it um, fill up your, your eye, but really just because of... <sighs> What is that fancy term for water going up a straw where water will sit there and it can actually suck itself up a straw? I can't think of the name of it, but you can put a glob. Reverse here. osmosis. Reverse osmosis. That's right. You can put a, a little blob here and it can go up here and actually suck itself down. Um, and you don't want too much, but your head's actually filled up. Weep, weep, water, weep. That actually sounds kind of right, Peter. I just made that up. That's, I don't know. Wick, it's actually wicking. Truman, that sounds right. Water yeah. Wick, like. Truman's answer is probably correct. <coughs> Mine sounded really yeah. like important. So let's switch over to the main cam real quick. And I'll um, capillary action. Todd is even more correct. The capillary action. Oh, good job, Todd. Um, dang it. Okay, so it. Ken's got to go in a few minutes. So what we're going to do, occasionally we'll do a drawing. Last week we tied... Not this one. I don't think we tied this one live. We tied one. It's white one's live. And actually in your in your box, it's a purple one live. So we'll um this one's pretty cool. So there, whoever wins is going to get this gurgler, uh, the white gurgler, and this really cool purple and yellow gurgler that we tied. Um, reverse osmosis is how they filter water, honey. Um, but so the people who commented on our YouTube video, so Katie's over here cracking up because she's like, dang it, they got busted. Um, whoever commented on the YouTube video after YouTube was over, went on and commented. Katie put everyone's name in the hat. So she's going to do the drawing. So everyone say, hey, Katie. Hey. Um, half the battle is sounding like you know what you're talking about. Right. 
That's right. You, yeah, you can say reverse osmosis, osmosis <laughs> anytime you want. We have Kenby's lovely Gergs here. Um, and we kind of had like a theme of like some like blue skies um, this week, I think. So I really loved those. I don't know just the color or what, but um, he definitely has the bi-color foam thing going, which is pretty cool. Um, also, we got uh, Jimmy Roop shared his version of the Gerg, and he had the bi-color foam going there, too, in the green and yellow. And Mr. Mike Raxel also did a blue and white. Um, a little bit different shade, but I really like the collar on that one. It looks really cool. That looks salty. It does look salty. Um, and then I just wanted to show this picture. Um, Chasing Feathers shared a picture of his lid rig box with flies that he got in the mail this week. Um, but this week we did a drawing based on people commenting on the video after it was over. So I went back. Um, today, I think maybe the last time I looked was around five and I wrote down the names of everybody except for A-Rex hooks, um, <clears throat> who commented on the video. And now we are going to do a drawing to see who is going to win the flies. flies. So let's do it. I got my, um, which one do I have? Oh, I have the should have used nano silk cup tonight. So this is. A little bit R-rated, but not too bad. So let's see who our big winner is. I'm like the girl from The Last Kingdom choosing the sacrifice. We've been watching The Last Kingdom recently, so. Yes, that's our latest binge. And our big winner is... Oh, God, I cannot read this. It's your writing. You can't blame me this time. Trout Slayer. Trout Slayer. Cool. Trout Slayer. You're the big winner. Congratulations. And thanks to everybody who commented. We had comments from uh, Mike Ragsdale and Trout Slayer. And Ken B. Ken B. Um, Peter P. Uh, who else commented? Mike Guinea. Mike Nay. Barry Dick Owl. Um, James Wilson, I got his later on this afternoon. He commented. And, um, of course, Mike Ingolstadt as well. Sound about right? That sounds about right. Tony. Cool. Well, congratulations to you, Trout Slayer. You're going to get some gurgs. So be sure you send us a message with your um, email address so that we can get those flies to you. Thank you, Katie. All righty. So... A couple people on YouTube were talking about the bodkin and the little little uh, uh, disposable things. And here on Instagram, there'd be any benefit to putting a, a CDC collar on these. Absolutely. I can't read your name. CDC collar would be great, but this is that would totally make this not really this style of fly. Um, but I think CDC collar would be phenomenal on, on, on this fly. <clears throat> the purpose of this one is really to get down quick and, and uh, be a good anchor fly. Once you start putting more bells and whistles on there, it um, starts slowing everything down uh, and kind of just changes the um, changes the aspect of this pattern. I've I've seen little dental things. I can't remember who who mentioned the the cosmetic things. They're like little toothpicks with little teeny tiny pieces of like um, cotton or something. They'll use to wipe it on. I just think that's wasteful. Um, but I've seen a lot of people use those where they'll put the drop on there and use that to spread the, uh, the UV resin. Um, <clears throat> this one I'll be really crazy with, and we'll just use Sally Hansen's because you can put some Sally Hansen's on there and, um, maybe put two coats if you want to, but Sally Hansen's will work just fine. Um, see, Ken, thank you for hopping on. I'm glad that worked out for you to see us tie. And, and thanks for sharing your pictures again this week. Ken. And watch this. So you'll have to come back and watch the rest of it later and use those when I had teeth. <laughs> All right. So in the vise, we've got the size 18 now. Umco XC 400 BL, along with a 2.5 millimeter copper bead. Uh, and we're going to do the exact same thing, only we're going to um, know, Patrick, per... Um, 
uh, Kelly Gallup, Perdigons ain't got no soul. You are correct. Um, but what can we say? Um, all right. So I'm going to grab my uh, CDL feather here. Um, this is just kind of backwards for me to pull fibers off this side. That's why I'm like not counting as well. So I'm going to go with four. So I'll let you tell me. I bet Steve will count them real quick. I think I've got, ah, oh, doggone it. That's five. I messed up last time. So I'm going to do it right this time. All right. So now I think I've got four. Four there. Yep. So <clears throat> I've got my fibers in my fingers. When I pull this here, you see how my butt ends are lined up pretty much straight. So when I pinch this, my um, tips are lined up. I pinch them together so it looks a little more lined up. See how my tips are lined up? Perfect. I have empty solely brush bottles. I can mail you one if you can like An, a, a brush bottle. Oh, I know what you said. The ones with the brush themselves. Um, yeah, like kind of like the, this with it's got a brush in it. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, okay, so I'm gonna grab the tip, the grab it by the tips, pinch the hook, make sure the hook's going straight up and down. Um, sometimes when I'm tying these, I'll have my hook kind of canted to the side, and I'll wonder why my tails are not perfectly on the center of the hook shank on top. And usually that's why. So pinch the thread, which you can see the thread. See how the thread's loose right now? Pull it down, and then pull it straight down like this. Rock it back and see how that's it's angled. But once I do this, I'll straighten it out. See, it's right on top. Grab those butt ends. I want to thread up. Pull it to length. So now we've got our tail pretty much right. Looks like it's on the camera. Looks like it's a little bit long. Fishing all the time in the gasoline is one of my favorites. So what uh, thread do you, or thread color do you use, Patrick, and or um, <clears throat> what, uh, um, what type of tinsel do you like? Cut that off. And now we're going to put one wrap here. Grab my tinsel that I know, that Perdigon body material is still sitting in my um, hack pliers. Grab it right here. A loose wrap, catch it. Bring it back all the way to the, the back of the fly, to the tail. Now with touching wraps, let's go and uncord my thread, the hen's body. Yep. I take a wrap on the tail. Fud, I do too on some flies. <clears throat> and, you know, I think we're literally, Fud, I think we're 100% splitting hairs here. But the only reason I don't on this type of fly is see how those three little bundle, three little or four fibers are very tightly compacted right there. Once I put that, um, I'm going to do it with the tinsel here. Once I do this, that usually spreads out the fibers and it kind of acts like a more of a fan. But that's really just splitting hairs. I don't know if it makes that much difference one way or the other. The good thing about that is it does prop it up and gets it to where it doesn't roll on the... Um, the, the hook shank will go down it. it does get a little bit more support um, <clears throat> on dry flies I do that a lot Make sure I my thread going the right way um, man, I think I'm going the wrong way with it if you ever spin your let's switch over to the side thing um, side camera please okay so if you ever are spinning your thread it's not going it's not uncording Take your bodkin, put it right by the, the hook, and then let go of your, your um, bobbin. Now pull it back towards you, and which way it's spinning will be untwisting. So normally this is not the way I twist it. So what I did is, as I was unspinning it, I went too far. So now that should be quite a bit better. Does that make sense? All right. So now we're going to go back and build up our underbody here. Or our, not our underbody, but our taper. Same way we did before. Just like that. So you see, we got a little teeny tiny carrot. So no biggie. Yes. Some, some solid copper, lucky penny. 
Some Lucky solid pen. copper. If I've done this, the uh, uh, gasolina and solid copper, but I might have to give that one a whirl. And then Jeff, you'd have to call it Lucky Penny. If Jesse says it's it's the bomb diggity, then it's the bomb. Then it's diggity. the bomb diggity. If y'all know Jesse Huddleston, he is Appalachia Fly Guy, phenomenal dude. Um, <clears throat> and if you're ever in the Smoky Mountains, there's a chance that he might go fishing with us this weekend. And John Christopher, with any luck, hence Crystal Flash 233. So I've seen a lot of um, a lot of takers on the hens. Um, and I, I feel like there's a there's a handful of the the tinsels that I would suggest um, for the Pertagon, but once you start use it or for the gasoline, but once you start using like a bunch of crazy, oh shucks, I was gonna do the hot spot. I'll go ahead and do the hot spot. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do right now is tie, do a two-turn whip finish. I should have done this before I wrap my tinsel. Y'all distracted me. So that was just a two-turn whip finish. So I've got my bare thread sitting there. Now I'm going to take my pink 18-knot classic wax thread. Now this is the bomb diggity for um, for small flies and for hot spots right here. Because one of the things when you're tying a hot spot behind a bead, you don't want the hot spot to be super, super, super big. I mean, this thing, when I hit it with a UV light, See that, that tag, how big it glows and everything. That this is um, bright, bright stuff. So the Smokies, Jeff. I'm looking. At, Jeff, have you met? Uh, oh shucks, Jesse. Yeah, have you met Jesse? Because if not, next time you come over, you'll have to meet him and say hello. You'll probably be like, "Yo, let's go zero special with him." Um. All right, now I want to do this. Pull that off. Try not to break the thread. We're going to soak it in some head cement here. Push that down. I don't like how that broke off, but. All right. So this time I'm just going to do flush it as I've seen. Yeah, I know. I was shocked. I was down there. I was down the smoke. He's last weekend and I sent Jesse a note and I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm guessing the you got to go up high or. Whatever, because I know just the fish is good. Well, it's supposed to cool off. And when I say cool off, I mean that like relatively a little bit and be really nice weather this weekend. Yeah. Well, the, with all the water they've gotten, because they have gotten a ton of water. I got in the river and swam this weekend. She did. She attracted a crowd. I did. So no, gonna... I didn't attract a crowd. Well, your brother. It's and just your... like every time I get in the water to like be like, okay, I have a minute to relax and swim. No one's going to bother me. It's like then everybody shows up. All right. So I'm going to just stick this in my cup here so it'll dry. But that's the easiest way. If you don't have the resin, don't drop it. If you don't have the resin, just use the other stuff. Um, so let's do a 20. Let's make let's make it. And don't let me forget the, uh, the hot spots. I'm going to show you the correct way to do it. I was talking about something, but I forgot what it was. So I got my size 20. I am switching the style of hooks because, um, I, believe it or not, this year I caught my biggest, locally, I caught my biggest brown of the year on this hook, and it was a size 20 um, Umqua Perta jig. This thing is sticky. When I pulled it off, I, I had to use uh, hemostats to get it, all, get it out because it was just stuck in there so good. I was shocked. So believe it or not, we're going to do the exact same thing. Truman says he hasn't been swimming on purpose since 1989. That's pretty much, I mean, I, well, I mean, that's, that, I, I, it really, let me set the like stage here. We were visiting my parents. The kids were all not there for one reason or another. It was just like a really pretty afternoon. It was the hottest part of the day. John and I have been down to the river. We've been watching, you know, the fish in the water and, I was like, you know, this is a good. I'm just gonna go. Nobody's in. The, nobody's out on the porch or anything. It's just really quiet. I'm just gonna go slip in the water. You know, just kind of cool off. So, I mean, no sooner do I get in the water and my dad gets the leaf blower out, starts blowing all the leaves into the river. My mom's up there trying to be like, "Do you need a raft? I have a, 
I have a, an inflator I got from Sharper Image. I can blow up a raft. And, and then what happened? Oh, then some tubers came down. And then my, my niece showed up. <laughs> and I don't know. The next thing you know, I'm just like, you know what? It's just not going to happen. My peaceful dip in the water. I think my last time swimming in the river thing was, was just like Jeff's. Was in my waders. Um, all right. So I did finish that piece of tinsel. So I've got to pull a piece off. Another little little trick for for these. Now this is not semper fly exclusive, but you do have a little the caps right on your um, on your tinsels and threads. You got the caps. A lot of times we'll we'll leave it on there and we'll just wrap our thread through there and pull it tight. Well, this stuff is uh, thin, and it's um, I won't say it's delicate, but we don't want to crease it. If we don't have to. So what I'll do is I'll pop the cap off, bring it right here. You see it? Yep. And then I'll push it together. So it's you don't have to worry about it coming unspooled or anything. It just kind of sits there like that. No biggie. Of course, you could have been skinny dipping. Yeah, but I would not have done that during the daytime. <laughs> not there, especially because it's uh, there's lots of... There's lots of lots of peeps around. Yeah, there's people who live on the like there's there's people about for sure. So that would be like a nighttime night swimming activity for sure. Like Harvey. Truman slapping his face like ugh. No, all yeah. I wanted was I mean it, I was just like gosh, nobody's around. My dad's there. I thought people were taking naps. It was so quiet. I mean, as soon as my foot hit the water, the leaf blower, the inflatable rafts, the people coming down the river. Let's switch back over to the vice, please, ma'am. So we've got our tail tied. Now I'm telling you, this tail, if it wasn't, this is a size 20. This thing is, is small. This is like an actual size 20. Um, that tail is short. And the reason it looks long right now is because there's one fiber that was like a teeny bit longer. But that is a short, short tail. Um, so I'm going to get um look on night vision well it's the same place that um get my taper in there just a little bit now the smaller the hook you really don't need much much taper at all it's a teeny one so now because of the hot spot issue we're gonna go ahead and whip finish this with just a two turn whip you don't need anything anything big anything major um There we go. So we don't need anything major. Man, I'm not doing good cutting my thread with the lights. That's what I'll blame it on. Uh, because I'm going to come back, come right back with my hot spot. And my hot spot thread. And hopefully. There we go. Hopefully it's good. And I like Jesse's idea of the um, of using a lighter to burn the um, the tag in bag it and burn these little little things. The um, I don't think I've where did my lighter go? The one of the issues that I've had when I burned them is I'll burn more than um, <clears throat> than I want to burn. So we're gonna come up side by side. If they overlap a little bit, that's fine. You just really want to try not to have any gaps. All right. Yep. And when you first get this stuff, you're going to be like, oh, that's going to be impossible to wrap. It's not too bad once you get, once you kind of get in there. So, Patrick, if you're still on here, you say you've got a lot of success on this pattern. You've talked a few of your of your tricks. What what's your favorite size? If you had one or two sizes, what sizes would you throw? And <clears throat> do you all know who invented the gasolina? Who was the first one to bring it to market or show it? I prefer the blow torch, cauterizing tool. Is that blood? That is no Truman. It's not blood. Um, I've got one of the, I do have one of those right here, Steve, 18 for Steve, got to spark it, yeah, you got to be just right real quick with it, let's see, 
Okay, you want to switch back over to the hook one so they can really get close up and be messing this thing up. There we go. So I'm going to get this till it turns red. That looks about right. Got a little bit more control with the carterizing tool. 1820 to 2.5 to a 20 with a three millimeter bead. There you go. That seems small. Okay, so you see how when I look at this, even my glasses on, I can barely see that pink um, quote unquote hot spot, and that's fine. Um, and I'll show you just a second. I'm gonna do my whip finish right here. Now let's cut it off correctly. There we go. That was a pretty good cut. I do have that one little thing, so we'll pull out our just so you guys won't be because you know if you don't have it, if you don't have it darn. There we go. The fish will not bite it. What if I didn't mess up my tails? They're looking okay. And you know what, Steve? That's who I mess. I chatted with George last night or two nights ago. And I was like, hey George, you mind if I tie your pattern? And he's like, well, you can feel free to tie it, but it's not my pattern, so don't mention my name. Uh, don't don't let people get confused that I'm the one that invented it. And I said, it's not your pattern? He said, no, sir. And I said, well, thank you. Let me know. So I don't I don't know. He didn't tell me who, who did invent it, but he told me it was not him because he's the first one that I saw. And I just kind of assumed because it had been so long since I've seen the video and it was him. Katie and I met George at um, first time we met him was just last year at the Virginia Fly Fishing Show. Virginia Fly, what was it called? Wine and Fly Festival. Mm -hmm. Something like that. There we go. So we'll spin that around. Okay, so I, I told you that that hot spot was really small. See how like how bright that is? Assuming that we're making the assumption that fish are seeing fluorescent colors. So that that's going to be just that, a hot spot. So that's going to be perfect. And uh, you see the, the taper in there. We're good. Well, you won't be at the, I'm going to try to go. We're, we're going to try to go to the Atlanta show, but we're going to, um, shallow water to keep it at two millimeter. I just don't know. This is a 2.3 right here. I don't see how you would fit a three millimeter hook on a really much bigger hook on the size um, 20. Um, but yes, sorry, I'm getting back and forth. Um, and good guy, real heavyweight in fly fish, in my opinion. Um, where else was I, Katie? I was yapping. So Atlanta show, we, show. we've been to Atlanta show the past five years. If we can make it, we will be at the Atlanta show. Uh, we're going to try to go to the symposium this year in New Jersey. We're going to go to IFTD in Salt Lake City in about a month. And um, there'll be some other ones as well. And Roly is going to be in Atlanta, Jeff. Um, and I think I saw Jeff's going to be in Cleveland, Tennessee. Is that where you're going to be? We might run over and say hello to Jeffrey. Um, but yeah. anyway, we're going to have, uh, can you repeat the hotspot thread? Yes, Michael. Um he is a great, he does seem like a great dude the, few, the, the time we met him. So the hotspot thread. Um, so the Pertagon tinsel is great. Uh, this is the iridescent copper. Um, but for all of you seasoned tires, Truman and Jeff, and I kind of have a feeling Jeff's got some of this, but um, pull out your 18-aught classic wax thread. Um, and just for the heck of it, 18 knot small, right? It's teeny. It is very small. I'm going to show you what we just tied and the thread thing. So let's pull out a size, another size 16 hook. Strong hook. No biggie. So <clears throat> I'm going to take my 18 knot classic wax thread, this backwards, switch it back over to the vise. Um, it's backwards, but fluorescent pink. This way you smell hot spot. So I'm just going to start it here. Bring it back just like I normally would. Break it off. 
Now, this is 30 denier, I believe. Is it saying on here? Yeah, this is 30 denier. This is not nano silk. This is regular old thread. I want you to look at this. See if I can. Now, I'm pulling straight down. I'm not pulling at an angle. I'm just pulling straight. But <clears throat> it finally broke. So I'm pulling dang hard to make it break. Um, it, it is very strong. The diameter is super because it, it has a little bit, a little bit of a twist to it. Um, the diameter is super thin. It's really good for hot spots. Really good for teeny tiny flies. Um, I might try to work with with a um, a fly shop. See if we can do like a discount if someone orders five colors or so. But um, check and see what colors you've got. This is definitely one that I would have in your arsenal for different flies just because the thickness versus strength is, is really good. All the main colors are available in it. Um, <clears throat> sounds too much like a sales guy now. All right. So we tied some flies. We gave trout slayer. Is that right? Yep. Trout slayer is the winner this week. Trout slayer is going to get some flies. Just if you're a trout slayer, send us a message at, demuthflyfishing at gmail.com mm -hmm. or send us a message on Instagram and, and we'll get those over to you. Patrick, thank you very much. I'd love to see, or I'm not, I'm looking forward to seeing a picture of your Perdigons. Um, I have a 12 oh so I need to shop. Yeah, we've got all the 12 aught colors. I just don't, haven't used the 18 aught much because if you're careful, the, the 12 aught's usually small enough. But um, as you know, I like using smaller thread than most. I like to be able to control my thread wraps. And if I want, I'd rather have two wraps of thread versus one. Um, but this 18 knot is something to definitely check into. Um, Randy, it's awesome to see you again from Alaska. Hopefully Katie and I will be out there with John Christopher in less than a year. Third week in June is what it's looking like. Bill, thank you. Mike, always good to see you hopping on. Steve, thanks a lot, buddy. Fudd. Peace out. Katie, I'll turn it over to you. Let you say goodbye to everyone. Everybody have a great night, and thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.